right. Joining us today to talk about culture and all things employee experience is Eileen Bracamonte. She is the employee experience manager at Zavant. Eileen, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we're excited to have you on. Yes, thank you. First off, thank you for having me here, Trevor. It's an honor. And what I do a little bit here at Savant is I specialize in the employee experience from the full employee's full life cycle from onboarding all the way to off. I love that. Wow. So yeah, I'm really excited to dive in with you. This is a unique position, a role of employee experience manager. It's something that I've been hearing like more and more often that four or five years ago didn't really exist. Kind of like customer success manager is now employee experience yeah. manager. And so I wanted to dive in a little bit with you on that. Like, is that something you're seeing more of as this role of employee experience manager? Yes, I definitely think so. I think before it's, well, sorry, kind of to backtrack, I think it still falls in under HR, right? You know, the HR umbrella. And I think previously, and maybe today, HR is kind of looked at the brain of a company and compliance and audits and documentation. And I think this new STEM or era, if we want to call it, of employee experience, whether it's employee experience manager, culture managers, and as another, pardon me, job title that we've been hearing a lot about, it's kind of that heart that is stemming from companies and job titles. So I definitely think it's a new era per se, but I think it always has fallen under and will continue to fall under just the HR wow, industry. Really cool. Yeah. I've been hearing about it more. It's this new age of HR. I love how you mentioned like there's the brain of HR at Nectar. We like to think of it as like the brain of HR and the heart of HR. And I think you'll see That's in the awesome. future, like the roles really splitting and having like an even divide of the administrative side, but also the side that focuses more heavily on employee experience, employee happiness, morale, recognition, retention, all of those types of things are becoming more and more important that aren't part of that like traditional HR role. I think that's part of the overall trend that you're seeing with just people operations and people ops, right? Instead of being human resources. Yes, and to add to your point, I think people operations is also a new word or industry or job title, whereas before it was just human resources, and I think now it's breaking off into these different career paths as well. Yeah, that's interesting. I actually just got off a call with somebody who you mentioned culture manager. She was actually a culture manager, and that was the first time that I had heard of that role. And as I spoke to her about kind of what that all entailed and what initiative she works on, it was really similar to kind of what you were mentioning to me a little bit earlier. Would love to have you define like your role a little bit more. And I know you mentioned like onboarding all the way to when an employee ends up leaving the company, but what are some of the individual initiatives that you're kind of working on? Yes, of course, I'd be happy to. So. How I like to explain my job is, and my role is put yourself as the candidate, right? So let's say you're applying to Saban or you're applying to Nectar. Your employee experience starts there from the time where you first apply and when you first get that interaction, whether it's with the recruiter or the hiring manager or your first interview or your third interview, all the way up until onboarding. What I do here at Saban is that I conduct employees first day of onboarding orientation. And I'm kind of that transition person from recruiting, helping them get onboarded and then passing them off and transitioning them off to their managers. Now, once an employee is fully onboarded, I still go through these touch points in the employee's full life cycle, employee engagement, employee experience. We have events, virtual happy hours, recognition, awards, and a lot of items and initiatives that just fall under our employee experience program and I help carrying them out throughout the year. And then as well as performance management when needed, and then offboarding, exit interviews where applicable. And yeah, just going through through that life cycle. I love it. And remind me, when you started in this role at Zavant, was this pre or post like 2020 when COVID hit? This was post 2020, yes. Cool. And so you've been in this role It was while everyone had shifted to remote work or hybrid work. I'd love to dive into how that's working for you guys and 
since you were there like post COVID, I couldn't really ask you what you were doing necessarily before that as part of the transition, but we'd love to hear. Yeah. Are you guys hybrid? Are you remote? Are you in office? How are you bringing that employee experience together in this digital format, I guess? Yeah. So I think overall post COVID the workforce had, or depending on the workforce has made positive changes, right? So to answer your initial question at Savant, we're all of the above. So we're hybrid. We have remote employees. We have international employees. We have in-person employees. Um, so overall we do constitute as that hybrid in person and out of office employees. And I think something that just kind of helps all, or a lot of, um, hybrid companies. It's that flexibility, that trust, that work-life balance increase for employees as well. And I think within the past two years, ever since COVID, I think employees are voicing their expectations where I think pre-COVID, it was more of, we have snacks at the office and we have ping pong <laughs> tables and all of these, you know, cool stuff, quote unquote. But I think now post COVID as more employees are remote, more employees are hybrid working from home, they're voicing their expectations for that connection and that empowerment and that personal well-being. So I've definitely seen these trends and positive transitions occur throughout the workforce. I've totally seen all of that as well. Like I come from my first, my first job was at Qualtrics and that was my first experience in a software company as well. I just remember walking in the first day and there's like dogs running around the office and unlimited cliff bars. And they had the, when the Coke yeah. machines were brand new where you can like, there's like the touch screen you can pick like whatever you want. Pick like they somehow had that in there before anyone else and shuffleboards and ping pong tables and all of this. And I just remember that was always associated with the culture. And mm -hmm. that's what I thought culture meant was like all of those on things. Yeah. And now as I've matured a little bit and I've been in this space where I'm talking about culture with people like yourself all the time, uh, I've come to realize and notice how like the employee expectations have changed a lot. But also I think those things were kind of masking culture in a lot of ways. Like we were defining culture by those things and there's, there's really nothing against them. I think those are part of a great culture, but they're only one pillar that at Nectar, we would consider all of that under like the connection pillar or principle, but that in and of itself doesn't get you where you need to go when it comes to building a great culture. Correct. Yeah. So, drilling down into a few other things. I'm curious on like exit interviews, when you've done exit interviews, like whether that's at your current company or in the past. What are some of the most common reasons you feel like people are leaving? Yes, this is a really good question because I think there's two components to the reason behind employees leaving. And I think when you first have an employee give you your two weeks notice, you know, it's a shocker. And then you find out they're getting double pay or they're getting, you know, 60% increase. And I think what people notice most easily first, it's, oh, you know, the money, money is the motivation and they're leaving the company for a bigger salary. But I think if you really sit and reflect on that, it boils down to the main issue or the root cause of this ideal job satisfaction and passion and love and dedication and happiness. And I truly believe if an employee is not receiving that ideal quote unquote employee experience or recognition or support in their role, it will be actually easier for them to go somewhere else. Now they may be seeking all of the above that I just mentioned along with a higher pay. But on the flip side, I believe that if employees are bought into your company's mission, bought into your company's core values, and they feel recognized and they've had a positive experience from day one, I think it will be much, much harder for them to leave. And, you know, I think we've seen in, in recent trends or videos where it's not always the money. And I think it's more of the job and the role that you're doing that will dictate your happiness and you know, make it hard for you to leave a, that specific company that you really yep. love. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that 
money is like the main reason people come to work typically is like you have to pay the bills, you have to mm -hmm. provide for your family. So if you think of like Maslow's hierarchy, like that's at the very bottom. But in today's world, people are wanting to work their way up the pyramid into more of this like self-actualization, which are some of the things that you mentioned with purpose and feeling like trusted and given flexibility to work on things the way that they feel like they can best make an impact, feeling aligned with the company's mission and like core values and recognized for their contributions. Like those are all really, really important things on top of like feeling empathy and care from their leadership, whoever their manager is and like the executive oh, team, sure. like if they feel like the executive team doesn't care about them as an individual and about their well being, they're way more likely to go look for a bigger paycheck, even if it doesn't have those other important appeals to them. So I'm totally with you on that. I'm definitely seeing the same thing in a perfect world. Everyone gets paid super well and they have purpose and they have all these things that we've mentioned, but there's definitely trade-offs and more and more companies I think are realizing that like, if we can provide all of these things on top of competitive pay, we might just be able to get people mm -hmm. to stick around and stay, right? Yeah, for sure. What would you say, like, what do you think the roadblocks are for companies to building a great culture? You know, that's a good question. I think initially most companies' thoughts are time and resources and money. And I think when people look at employee experience and culture, they immediately think about budget and money and allocation and all of these very important stuff. But I think it costs nothing to, you know, do a virtual happy hour or something that we implement here at Sabant that I think goes along great with our connection and our culture is that for all of our departmental meetings and or personal meetings, we have something called a segue which it's you either share a personal win and or a professional Ooh, win and you know some people may think it's silly right because typically it's like we're here to work let's get this out of the way we have the super important deadline but if you take those extra two to three minutes and connect mm -hmm. with wh whoever person it is that you're talking to i've seen that you know the meetings flow much easier and you are like wow i really know trevor or wow you know trevor's dog did this today or you know whatever it is that you shared with someone else you're opening up that trust that vulnerability and then it's things like that that you can implement within your company and or your role that you can start by making small steps and i think that's where the connection really comes through it's with the people that's awesome uh do you mind if we steal that by the way the segue idea yes yeah yes. I, i'm of excited course. to share that to uh, with our team internally but also like to the world. I think that's awesome because that falls in line with culture being around rooted in core principles. And as I mentioned previously, like yeah. the connection principle is extremely important for culture. And that's like a really simple thing that you can add on to every meeting to just help people feel more human and feel like we're able to bond yeah. at work and outside of work in a little bit. And I think that as people really get to know each other, as much as they're comfortable, everyone has like different comfort levels on, on what they want to share of and course, stuff. Right. Yeah. But I think if we really get to know each other and build this relationship and this friendship, we're just going to do better work, right? We're going to produce at a higher level yes. and we're not like a bunch of robots that like clock in every day and just yeah. have to just be like heads down all day with our blinders on. Right. Like we really thrive when we're connecting and collaborating. Yeah. So, yes, no, of course, please do. And then I'd be happy to show you kind of, you know, we do a specific meeting structure that ever since we've implemented, I think it's been really helpful and the segue is implemented in that. So yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah. Show you in time. fact, we may even be able to put that in the show notes. If you can share some of that, as far as like the meeting structure framework, that would be awesome. I'm sure people would love that. Yes, please yes, do. I know you and I have talked about the culture framework that we've created at Nectar. It's called CREATE. And so it's an acronym CREATE, which includes six core principles. So we have connection, recognition, empathy, alignment, trust, and elevation. I'd be curious to hear like at Zavant, which of those six core principles do you feel like 
your team is best at and why? Yeah, so if I have to pick one, I would say that Savant does a really good job at connection. In you know, today's hybrid or virtual world, it may be really hard for us and our coworkers to feel that in-person connection once you come in, get your morning coffee, stop by someone's desk and see how their weekend was. And I think what has worked really well for us here at Tabon is implementing virtual happy hours and team activities and monthly team meeting updates, and, along with our biannual in-person company events. And something that I do to embody this principle in my role is to lead these initiatives and you know help host these events. And some pointers that I would give to people in our audience is to pick one small one small thing and implement it. Happy hours may not work for every company or team activities. Again, they may not work for every company, but find the root cause or the quote unquote issue that your company needs to have solved and start by implementing those with within your culture or employee experience. That's awesome. And so to dive deeper on, on the happy hour, I, I had a feeling you were going to say connection because just throughout this discussion, like it's come up a few times. Deep dive a little bit onto one of those, which was the virtual happy hour. I've heard of companies doing this. I think it's quite popular, but how exactly, like if we wanted to start a virtual happy hour tomorrow, what are the steps to actually doing it? Yes, that's a good question. And I think it seems more daunting or it feels more daunting than it is, but you know, just send out a meeting invite to all staff. I think a good meeting always has some description, some agenda of what's going to happen, sometimes incentives or just things to get people excited, clickbait. Something that I like to do at our happy hours that I host here is, for example, in October, this is actually a good example, in October we're having a virtual Halloween costume oh, contest. Cool. And I'll always include incentives like the best costume will get a $25 Starbucks gift card on me or X person or X winner for this happy hour will get X amount of nectar points. So I think making it fun, having these incentives and clickbaits and just uh, making people excited to, to yeah, show Yeah, that's cool. Cause there is like a lot of seasonality. You can do something for, especially this time of year, right? Where it's like Halloween, maybe there's something for Thanksgiving that's yeah. themed that way or Christmas. And then there's Easter or whatever. Yeah. So I, I like that. That's, that's really interesting. Based on like the agenda and like the format of those meetings, if you had anything you could share on that, maybe I could add that to the show notes of just a framework or an yeah. outline so that people wanting to start would know what the first steps are and what the agenda looks like. And then what about the cadence on that? Did you say that you guys do that weekly or biweekly or every month? Yeah, so we do the monthly, we do happy hours monthly. And then here at Tabont, we have something called a Thriving Thursdays, where every Thursday of every month, there's an hour set aside for a company-wide meeting, event, initiative, etc. For example, let's say the first Thursday of every month is a lunch and learn. This could be more informational, more hard or soft skills training and learning or financial learning, whatever it is that we want to provide for our employees. And then the next Thursday could be the team activity. The Thursday following could be the company update meeting. And then the final Thursday could be the happy yeah. hour. So we try to kind of have a cadence where it is monthly. And I think if it's set in stone, employees will know, oh, I don't know what Thursday it is today, but all I know is that at 12, there's a company-wide meeting going on. So I think it helps kind of ingrain it in employees' yeah. head and kind of look forward to and the And is that usually day. done around noon? So kind of around everyone's lunchtime then? Yeah, so we do do it around noon and it's either employees can grab lunch before, sit in with us or sit in with us and then just go grab your lunch after and take the time that you need Got to it. yourself as well. Love it. Yeah, this is great. As far as like moving along a little bit, is there a resource, a tool, or a channel that you think people aren't using correctly or to its fullest? Yes, I'm very glad you asked this because as you've known, and I think I've shared with you before, I love Nectar and beside Savant using Nectar, in my opinion, you know, quite well and efficiently, we have a great percentage of usage. I think a lot of companies out there need to know more about Nectar and need to 
know that connection and that culture that I think Nectar really implements and brings into a company. And I've heard of some of our new hires where we introduce them to Nectar, they sometimes are like, oh yeah, we've used a program like that before and people just did it for the point or, you know, people just did it for the money. But I think once they see how we use Nectar and how we have it implemented with our core values and our recognition, it's like, oh, well, you know, this is different. So I think Nectar is a really great and powerful tool that if used correctly and efficiently can bring many great successes to a lot wow. of companies. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. And for the record, can you confirm that I did not ask you to say that at all? Um, I actually, I, I actually like did that not, was happen, but yes, no, I, I did not expect you to yes, say no, that I at all, didn't. but I love no, it. No, Trevor did not pay me <laughs> any money. This is genuinely as an employee of Savant using Nectar, it's like, I love it. And I feel like every company should have Nectar and implement it. And you, again, like I mentioned, we can create, or we implemented our core values in there where in order to shout someone out, you do have to like assign them to a core value. And again, it's just a game changer when you know how to use a platform like Nectar. Correctly. Well, I really appreciate that, Eileen. I definitely did not expect that. And I'm glad to hear you guys are continuing yes. to see value from it. That's awesome. Yes. And what about, what's a recent thing that you've tried at Zavant that you were surprised by the result? That's a good question. So a couple months ago or just a while back, our core values at the moment, we felt were a little overwhelming. We had too many, they were too long. No one could really memorize them because they, we had too many and they were too long. And I feel that a lot of employees didn't really feel connected to our core values or bought into the mission through the core values. So something that we did as a company, we started off and we took the initiative of redesigning and renaming our core wow. values. Now, something that initially just started off as a word vomit exercise, we went through the process of all of the synonyms that we like or that we want our company to be associated with, that we want to be associated with, went through the whole process and fast forward, we were able to come up with five core values we care, we innovate, we deliver, we thrive, and wow. we win. And through this company-wide exercise, everyone was bought into the mission. And it wasn't something that we, that just, for example, our leadership did, and then they published it, and they're like, hey, these are our new core values, here they are. It was that pyramid that you talk about, it was flipped and inverse, and it's the employees working and bringing together these core values, and our employees created our core values. So now as our core, or fast forward to today, as we've had our core values, I wanna say for a year, maybe perhaps a little bit over, everyone knows our core values. It's the first thing that we introduce our new hires to here at Sabat. And it's been a game changer and it's been super nice. And it's brought a lot of success to our team just going through this together. Wait, this is, yeah, this is so cool. I wanna dive in a little more on this and drill down. So from what I'm hearing, like you guys redesigned your core values from scratch and my next follow-up was like, was this the CEO and the executive team put it together? It sounds like this was more of a grassroots, like we're figuring it out together. So I'd love to dive in more to the process of like, how did this like begin? If we were trying to redesign our core values, like what advice would you give us? Are there any like resources that we need to know about? Things like that. Yeah, that's a good question. So to kind of give you the, the lay of the land or the process of how we did it was, Again, we were feeling, you know, they're too long, they're too complicated, we can't memorize them. You know, we found the issue. And then looking into the long-term vision, some feedback did come from our leader or our executive leadership team where it's, I don't remember our core values or they're not sticking to people's brain. So our people operations manager at the time was like, hmm, like let's change something. We have to do something about this. So we decided to send out a meeting invite to one person from each department. So we sent out a meeting invite to someone from sales, someone from marketing, someone from client success, someone from HR, so on and so forth. And we just were like, welcome guys to the meeting. This meeting is to hopefully tackle this initiative of redesigning our core values. And surprisingly not, everyone was excited and everyone was like, yes, it's about time. Yeah. And they, I'm sure they felt bought um, in because they felt ownership. Like we're figuring yeah. this out together. Like this isn't yes. something like forced on 
to us from the leadership team. Correct. Like they're going to hear our feedback and together we're going to be able to create <laughs> like the core values that we feel identify who we are and what our DNA is here yes. at Zabon. That's so incredible. Yes, yes, yes. And then what each team member did was, I think we told them to give us like five to 10 synonyms of just positive words or things that they like. And let's say someone did encouragement or, you know, whatever word that they gave us by the end of the hour long call, I want to say we had like a hundred, a hundred something synonyms. Um, so what we did next was group these words or synonyms together. So we highlighted or color coded all of the ones that were similar with a group or the other ones that were the group. And then we kept on having these recurring series and recurring meetings. I want to say we had about four to five hour long meetings. This was done over a month, a month and a half process. So we had about one meeting per week. And then in the next meeting, once we had them all grouped, it's like, okay, you know, all of these words together, what's the one word that defines all of these words? And let's say it was care. Yep for example. So you, you kind of start bringing up these words up the yep. ladder, right? So you have a hundred words. Now you have 20 groups them, out like, of these 20. Synonyms. What's that yeah. one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's that one word that stands out that defines these words? And let's say it was care. And, you know, we started bringing up all of these words. We ended up with five or 10 and we essentially finalized our words. We care, we innovate, we deliver, we thrive and we win. But we wanted kind of a definition for each, for employees to know what does we care mean? What does we deliver mean? Um, So we came up with these definitions as well. Each team member from each department gave their suggestions, gave their recommendations. And then, yeah, just going through that process, once we had a solid finalized core value or several core values, we then turned it over and presented presented them to our executive leadership team and I remember this very clearly. Our CEO said, wow, this is the first time ever I have no feedback. It's perfect and I love it just wow. how it is. So, and you know, everyone's just shocked and everyone's excited and everyone's like, oh my gosh, like we did that and no changes were required or made. So long story short, it was a team amazing. effort. It was an amazing experience where now you know your company's core values and you feel bought into them and you know you contributed to them. And I think it's been an awesome thing that we did. When it comes to like designing core values, this is like the coolest thing I've ever heard. Like, I love how leadership (laughs) had everyone get involved. And instead of like everyone all at once, it was like bring in like the managers or department heads, someone to represent each part of the company. Mm -hmm. It just, it seems like a really powerful process on nailing it down together to where it's like really bought bought in, everyone's bought in. There's a lot of, there's meaning behind each value because you have like descriptions of what they look like. You have a system for like Mm -hmm. operationalizing those based on people being recognized and their kind of behaviors and things. Hats off to the Zavant team. That's, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I'm so glad that came out. (laughs) Yes. No, thank you. I I recommend any team whenever they can to definitely do it. It was an amazing experience. I love that. Well, I have a million and one more questions for you, but I feel like we've gotten some serious gold nuggets and I don't want to like take any, any more time up. Thank you so much, Eileen, for joining me. This has been, like I said, incredibly insightful and I'm excited to kind of stay in touch. Yes. Yes. Thank you for having me here, Trevor. It's been a pleasure. And once again, thank you so much.